If you have a chair, you may be seated. I guess counting falls under math, and you know the math scores have dipped since COVID, so we apologize for any inconvenience. Welcome to the 92nd Commencement Exercises of Fredonia Central School. I'm Darren Paschke, and while this is the 32nd time I've attended Fredonia High School's graduation, I cannot overstate the great honor and the privilege that it is to attend this commencement ceremony and represent our district as its high school principal. It is now my pleasure to introduce the individuals on stage. Please acknowledge with a wave when I call your name. To my left, in the first row, Mr. Greg Lauer, Assistant High School Principal. Ms. Josephine Tomaszewski, Salutatorian. Mr. Alex Weiss, Valedictorian. Ms. Gina Davis, School Counselor. Mr. Stephen Roman, School Counselor. Miss Jessica Sinclair, who is an inspiration to us all, and I believe it says here, our most awesomest student. <laughs> to the left, in my second row, Mr. Maxwell Corrente, Senior Class President. Miss Sarah Davis, Student Performer. Mr. Micah Davis, Student Performer. Mr. Tim Brandon, student performer. To my left, in the third row, Ms. Gianna Gullo, student council president. Ms. Gabriela Matos Dominguez, student performer. Mr. Adam Lesh, student performer. Mr. Lucas Hoffman, student performer. And to my right, Dr. Brad Ziliak, superintendent of schools. Mrs. Janet Burns Safir, commencement speaker. Dr. Margie Wright, Chief Officer of Curriculum and Human Resources. Mr. Brian Aldrich, Board of Education President. Mr. Steve Johnston, Board of Education Vice President. Mrs. Lisa Powell Fortna, Board of Education Member. To my right in the second row, Mr. Thomas Hawk, Board of Education Member. Mrs. Sheila Hahn, Board of Education Member. And to my right in the third row, Ms. Annie Gondek, Student Performer. Mr. Ryan Davis, student performer. Ms. Abby Roth, student performer. And Mr. Calder Anir, student council vice president. Board member Aaron Marshall chose to sit with his family today instead of on stage because he might have someone graduating his family today. Congratulations. I'd like to make this final and special introduction of an extraordinary individual who graced our halls with her presence but lost her short battle with COVID back in April of this year. As a cherished member of our high school community, Lauren Arch exuded kindness, compassion, and an unwavering commitment to excellence. Her vibrant energy and insightful artwork brought joy to all who knew her. Her passion for learning, coupled with her boundless creativity, inspired her, her peers and our staff alike. Though her time with us was tragically cut short, her legacy will continue to shine brightly, reminding us to embrace each day with unwavering enthusiasm and cherish our precious moments together. Her presence will forever be a part of our school through her contribution to our new book mural in the high school hallway and the new section of our high school library called Arches Art, where her works will be proudly shown and the Art Student of the Month will be recognized for all years to come. Today, we celebrate and honor the extraordinary life of Lauren Arch. Through her chair, though her chair remains empty to honor her today, our hearts are full with the memories of the joy that she gave us willingly and selflessly every day that she was with us. Now, today, we gather to celebrate the culmination of your high school journey. I stand before you filled with immense pride and admiration. This day is significant. Your transition from being students whose world has been framed for you in many respects to a world where you suddenly have a lot more individual choices 
This might have been eagerly awaited, utterly feared, or not even given a passing thought. Nonetheless, this chapter of your lives begins today. As you embark on this new chapter, there are a few important lessons that I would like to emphasize. The importance of being our best selves, making good choices, and embracing accountability. Being our best selves is a lifelong journey. It means continually striving to grow and improve, both academically and personally. It means embracing our strengths and acknowledging our weaknesses, for it is through this type of self-awareness that we find our true potential. Remember that success is not solely measured by the achievements that we can see, but also by the kindness that we show, the empathy that we display, and the positive impact that we have on the lives of others. Secondly, the choices that we make shape our future. Graduation marks a turning point where you will face countless decisions that will determine the courses of your lives. Some choices will be straightforward, while others will be more challenging. Remember that even the smallest choices can have far-reaching consequences. Make decisions that align with your values and your aspirations, ones that bring you closer to your goals and to your dreams. Seek guidance when needed and have the courage to choose what is right over what is easy or popular. Lastly, accountability is a cornerstone of personal growth and success. It means taking ownership of our actions, accepting the consequences, and learning from our mistakes. In a world of increased anxiety and depression, sorry, accountability teaches us resilience, humility, and the power of growth. It empowers us to take control of our lives rather than succumb to the circumstances beyond our control. Embrace accountability as a tool for self-improvement and remember that your actions reflect upon you and the values instilled within you by your families and your Fredonia Hillbilly family. Now at graduation rehearsal, we practice standing and sitting as a group and the importance of following instructions. And it's amazing what we can accomplish in less than an hour. For example, will the candidates please rise? Not bad, not bad. I, I'm pretty impressed. Now we're gonna try something that we didn't practice. Will the candidates please turn around and face the audience? Well done. We didn't practice that. Class of 2023, in front of you, oh, wait, wait one second, you get, you get your shot. Class of 2023, in front of you are family, friends, and Fredonia Central School staff who have helped you to get where you are today. And we are extremely proud of what you've accomplished and the potential for what you will accomplish. Class of 2023, please show your gratitude to all of these individuals who have made deposits in your lives and investments in your future by giving them a standing ovation. Thank you, candidates. Now, if you want to applaud them again, you can. Okay, the candidates may be seated. Each year, I've also given us my own standing ovation to my wife. My Fredonia Lady Hillbilly, who was in the class of 1987. Without her giving spirit and support, this job would be impossible to do. It may seem counterintuitive, but standing in agreement with my wife that we will put the needs of others before our own has blessed us more than we could ever ask or think. Thank you to my love for supporting me to be my best self to support our kids. Thank you, honey. And now a quick review. Class of 2023, know that you carry the hopes and dreams of those here and those who are not, who have supported you on this journey. Cherish the friendships you have made, remain connected to your roots, and learn to give to, go, learn to, give to others selflessly and generously. Strive to be your best selves, make choices that align with your principles, and embrace accountability for the decisions that you make. And now it is my honor to begin the celebration 
of the successful young adults of courage, strength, pride, success, intelligence, and character that we see before us. I call on Mr. Calder Anir, our Student Council Vice President, to kick off the 92nd Commencement Exercises of Fredonia High School. All right, before I start, I would like to take a moment to recognize all of the classmates who couldn't be with us today. May, this, may they be with us in spirit. All right, good afternoon, Superintendent Dr. Ziliox, members of Board of Education, Principal Paschke, Vice Principal Lauer, administrators, distinguished guests, amazing teachers, relieved family, and of course, the wonderful class of 2023. My name is Calder Neer, and I am the Vice President of Fredonia High School Student Council. And it is my honor to welcome you all to the commencement of Fredonia High School's class of 2023. Congratulations, guys. We finally made it. It only took us, what, like 13 years, nine months, and 17 days. Let me do the math real quick. That's uh, a total of 5,038 days. And 5,038 days ago, Many of us were walking through the doors to Wheelock, either jumping with joy or crying, refusing to leave the sides of our parents. And then 5,038 days later, here we are sitting in King Concert Hall. Who knew 5,038 days could go by so fast? I know this may be cliche, but it's just too perfect for the moment. So as Ferris Bueller once said, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you might miss it. So now, I invite every single one of you to savor this moment, then capture it in a metaphorical amber, and then store it somewhere special. And then, for better or for worse, this might be the very last time you see some of your teachers and your classmates. Now, I encourage you to reflect on the past 5,038 days as I continue my speech. The countless hours spent on homework and studying, the countless hours in the weight room and on the practice field, the countless hours sitting bored out of your mind in math class. The countless hours spent with your best friends creating epic memories. Well, believe it or not, that's what brought you here today, waiting for me to hurry up so you can fi finish and finally graduate. Well, what's the point of it all? Those 5,038 days, they're a pretty big portion of your life, and it, it shouldn't be wasted learning the quadratic equation, which many of you say you will never use again in your life, and well, you're probably right. Instead, I would like to suggest that the point of those 5,038 days was to give you the tools to answer these two simple questions. Now, these aren't the questions that we're used to in school. There is no right answer, and you're the only person who can answer it. Well, these questions are, who are you and why are you here? I'll say it again so it can sink in. Who are you and why are you here? Now, don't just say because I was born and your name because that's not going to do you any good. Dig a little deeper because the more thought you put into answering them, the more you'll get out of it. Because at the end of the day, you decide the answers, not your environment, teachers, friends, or family, just you. So as we graduate and start the next 5,038 days of our life, if you ever feel lost, look back on these two simple questions, and hopefully they'll guide you to where you want to truly be in life. Once again, I'm excited and thankful to welcome you to the Fredonia High School's commencement of the class of 2023. These 5,038 days have truly been unforgettable. Good afternoon. My name is Rick Bergstrom. And with me today are my wife, Brenda, and our niece, Laura Bergstrom Kazmierski. Sorry, I'll get it right. We are here to, to present the Ricky Bergstrom Music and Bowling Scholarship. 
Our son Ricky was a typical student complaining about school, but he was always ready, prepared, and on time for class. Ricky was a lifelong learner, but took pride in being diverse and open to a challenge. He was an honored student that completed the 313 program at Fredonia State University and was a candidate for August graduation at Canisius College with his MBA when he had his accident. Ricky was motivated, working part-time at Rite Aid, being a licensed real estate agent, and most importantly, starting his own business, Burger's Kicks. Burger's Kicks was a successful business and introduced Ricky to the sneakers community. Ricky prided himself in friendships. He saw the good in everyone and developed a vast network of contacts throughout the United States and the entire world. On March 19th of this year, a large group of Ricky's friends and family came together at Lucky Lanes and supported an event that we called Remember Ricky. It was a chance to continue his legacy of uniting his friends and family. As a result of this event, the Ricky Bergstrom Music and Bullying Scholarship expanded to four scholarships and the, the first place scholarship to over $1,000. The selection committee was asked to identify individuals that went beyond being a high school student. We looked for student learners that displayed leadership through example. We would ask the following four students join us here on stage. Actually, two of them are on stage already. Ryan Davis, Ali Cook, Gabriel Helwig, and Sarah Davis. Each of these applicants was asked to write a short essay explaining how they exhibit the criteria of being a modest, friendly, uplifting, and welcoming nature. All of the applicants spoke about their experiences in the many clubs, organizations, and sports at high school. Most wrote about work experiences and family endeavors. All four of these students are a great reflection of the quality of this graduating class. Ryan Davis participated in symphonic band for eight years, jazz band four years, and represented Fredonia at NISMA competitions. His recommendations highlighted, and I quote, that he goes out of his way to help others, is accepting of everyone, and seeks to include all those wishing to participate. Thank you, Ryan, for being accepting of everyone and for your kind remembrance of Ricky and your essay. Ali Cook joined the varsity bowling team as a seventh grader. She wrote, and I quote, despite only one person being on the approach at a time, you are a team. The success of a team depends on everyone doing their best and supporting each other. Thank you, Ali, for your insight into bowling as a team sport and especially for reminding everyone that has been involved with youth bowling of Coach Greg Haas's encouragement and reminder that bowling is fun. Gabriel Helwig participated in and achieved first year trumpet in the jazz and symphonic bands. He participated in Fredonia's Tri-M Music Honor Society. Gabriel has, and I quote, been awarded the opportunity to play my trumpet at Canisius College while attending the five-year accounting program through the business department and becoming a certified public accountant. Good luck, Gabriel, in your studies at Canisius College, and we hope you'll enjoy the quality education that Canisius has to offer. Sarah Davis participated in both jazz and symphonic bands playing clarinet and was involved in the unified bowling competition. She wrote, and I quote, I'm the type of person who doesn't want all eyes on me and for me to be the center of attention. I like to lift up others before myself. I like other people's accomplishments to be recognized before my own. Thank you, Sarah, for displaying these qual needed qualities. They will take you far in the future. Congratulations. We could just make one last statement. I hope that every graduating student 
will take a few minutes today to express to their parents and other guiding adults a thank you for assisting them in achieving this milestone in their education. And to the parents and significant others, spend a few minutes expressing to your son or daughter the pride you have for their accomplishment and continue to be part of their future. You never know how long they'll be here. Thank you. Good afternoon. Congratulations, class of 2023. <clears throat> Such a great day, and I know your families are all very proud. It's my fa this is my dad's favorite day, right, Mom? Before I begin, I just wanted to thank the Board of Education, your superintendent, Dr. Zaliox, and Principal Paschke for keeping this award on graduation day. It really means a lot to our family. Um, your principal knew my dad. My dad was his principal, so that's kind of cool. It's truly an honor to, honor to give out this year's Thomas Samahiri Scholarship Award, and I do this on behalf of my mother, who is here with me today, my two sisters, Mary Rita and Michelle, and my brother, Michael, who are not here. Along with me, I brought my son, Nick, who never met his grandfather. But he hears lots of stories of his character and leadership, so I'm very thankful for his presence here today to appreciate my dad's legacy. Tom died 30 years ago from complications of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. He was your principal from 1972 until he passed away early, January 93. You probably still walk by his picture in the hallway. He was only 54 years old when he died, so a very short life. But his lessons of life still carry with us today he was one of those leaders who was strong, firm, confident, extremely caring, and always willing to listen. He connected with his faculty tremendously. And he did this all with patience, understanding, compassion, and guidance. He encouraged all of you to make good choices, set your goals, study hard, listen, lead with integrity, and most importantly, to treat others the way you wanted to be treated. He, he got respect because he gave it, and he was a natural leader, helping students and teachers and making a difference, guiding them along the way. He showed up to work every day, even though he was still sick. What an inspiration of never giving up. You could always stop by Mr. Heary's office for some words of wisdom, lunch money, <laughs> in case you forgot it, or just to chat and learn a lesson of life or two. He never judged anybody but he would offer his advice and support in whatever you were dealing with. This community lost a great man, and 30 years later, we still, we still feel his loss. But today, we are reminded and hopeful that great leaders do still sit among us today. The winner of this year's award has these qualities, and the committee believed that this graduate will move on to college and learn and develop these same leadership skills that my grandpa had. And so, the winner of the 2023 Thomas M. Heary Scholarship is Gianna Gullo. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to administrators, Board of Education members, um, parents, family, friends, and of course, the graduating class of 2023. 
I'm here and I'm honored to be able to present to you the Roger Pecos Memorial Scholarship. In November of 2020, we lost a colleague, teacher, coach, leader, brother, son, father, and a dear friend, Roger Pecos. Besides being a teacher of technology and engineering education, Roger was involved in a lot during his career at Fredonia Central School District. They included high school bowling coach, Fredonia Teachers Association president, principal at the STEP program, assistant principal at the high school, student council advisor, and instructional leader for the career preparation department. Roger also served his community in many different ways. He was a volunteer for the Fredonia Recreation Department. He was a village of Fredonia trustee, the co-principal and volunteer at Northern Chautauqua Catholic School, a coach at Lucky Lanes Junior Bowling, a treasurer at the First Ward Falcon Club, and a volunteer for the Fredonia Fire Police. I had the opportunity to meet Roger and become his student teacher back in the fall of 1998. The next year I was hired here at Fredonia and had the pleasure of working alongside him as a technology and engineering teacher for the next 21 years. I was his student teacher that whole time, I think. I learned a lot from him. During that time, we developed a great working relationship and we became great friends. Being a friend may have been one of Roger's greatest impacts on the community. Roger always offered his assistance when he needed an extra hand. He was a compassionate and generous person and he was always dedicated to serving others. He had a great sense of humor and a quick wit, and you often left the room still laughing at a joke or one-liner that he had may have said. When the committee came together to establish the criteria for this memorial scholarship, we wanted candidates who exhibit many of the same qualities as Roger. We put an emphasis on involvement in school, community, and volunteer activities. The committee feels that the recipients of this year's scholarship truly embody what Roger Pecos stood for. The recipients have been very involved in the Fredonia community through music, athletics, student government, clubs, and honor societies. The recipient had been very, these recipients have been very uh, dedicated to community service through youth camps, church activities, volunteering for various activities and or organizations such as Boy Scouts, the county fair, cleaning up beaches, and fall sweep. After interviewing the candidates, our committee felt that the recipients resemble Roger's passion for helping others and serving their communities, and would continue to do so throughout their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to announce the three recipients for the 2023 Roger Pecos Memorial Scholarship. Calder Anir, Adam Lesh, and Asher McNett. Each year, the Pecos family honors a high school senior who has successfully completed a variety of technology education courses with a scholarship in memory of their sons and brothers, Brian J. and Roger L. Pecos. Of course, you just heard me talk about Roger, so I'd like to take a few moments to say a few words about Brian. Brian has served as a technology education teacher here at Fredonia, mostly teaching middle school technology education until his untimely death in 1994. Although I never had the opportunity to know and work with Brian, I've heard that he wasn't too different than his brother, Roger. He had a great sense of humor, enjoyed helping others and volunteering in his community. He was friendly, and he enjoyed teaching technology education. Candidates for this scholarship must submit an application with an essay describing what technology-related career they path, <laughs> let me try that again, what technology-related path career they have chosen and why. This year's recipient took five technology education courses throughout high school and plans to attend college to major in mechanical engineering. This year, the recipient of the Brian J. and Roger L. Pecos Memorial Scholarship is Matthew Brown.
Hi, my name is Josephine Tomaszewski. When writing, starting to write this speech, I was really nervous about what I was going to write. I wanted to reflect back on our time together as a class, but I felt as though I didn't have the right words to capture it all. So I figured I'd start with some numbers instead. As Calder mentioned, from kindergarten to now, we've been with each other roughly 728 weeks, 5,038 days, and 7,358,400 minutes. To put that into perspective, that's the equivalent of watching all nine seasons of The Office 1,658 times. <laughs> Some of us have been here from the very start and others have joined along the way, but everyone sitting in front and behind of me today has helped play a role in making the class of 2023 so special. By no means has the last 14 years been easy, but we have made so many amazing memories together. For me, I can still remember my first day of kindergarten, I was a crazy young girl with messy hair, fidgeting in my favorite red dress. My biggest accomplishment in life was getting on the bus all by myself. To five-year-old me, the world didn't seem so large and intimidating. All that mattered was what game we were going to play on the playground that day and who would be sitting next to me at lunch. And while it all seems a little inconsequential right now, I made friendships with classmates who I can still consider my friends today. Despite all that we've gone through and how much we've changed as the years went on, the connections I made in Mrs. Kaminsky's kindergarten class never disappeared. I think that's a lesson worth holding on to. As we each transition into the next chapter of our lives, don't be afraid to look back and reach out. We've met so many people and made so many new friends throughout the years. No matter where you go, those connections will always stick with you. It's safe to say that now, almost 13 years later, we have a lot more to worry about than recess and lunchtime. We have to figure out what we want our lives to look like, who we want to surround ourselves with, and all that other stuff that no one wants to think about until they absolutely have to. It's difficult to look at what lies ahead of us and not feel a little scared and unprepared. But writing this speech and looking back at the last 14 years made me realize that we as a class are way more prepared than we may think. We have already overcome and accomplished so much, and these challenges and experiences have taught us all something in one way or another. Even going back four years ago to when our high school journey started, we were all timid freshmen trying to figure out the dynamics of high school before we suddenly had to face the challenge of learning through a computer screen while simultaneously living through a global pandemic. We not only had to carry the burden of how the pandemic personally affected us all, but we also had to figure out a whole new system of learning, not to mention trying to maintain social connections through a screen. That is something we should all be proud of. These last couple years, we may have felt scared, stressed, and alone at times, and at many points, it might have seemed impossible to make it to the next day, let alone to graduation. And yet here we are, about to walk across the stage. If that doesn't prove that this class has the grit and resilience to conquer any challenge that we may face in the future, I don't know what does. Together, we have learned how to adapt to difficult situations and to continue on despite the obstacles life throws at us. We have learned how to make the best out of anything and to create our own fun even, and especially when it seemed like there was nothing to be excited about. But most importantly, we have learned how to support and to pick each other up. Whether it was making Zoom classes interesting and entertaining, reaching out to someone who was struggling, or even just offering a classmate a smile in the hallway, we have all helped each other make it to where we are today. As a young freshman, I was worried that in four years, I would look back and feel as though we were cheated out of a full high school experience. But standing here today, I can say that I've genuinely enjoyed these last four years. And that is thanks to all of you. Every opportunity we did get, every football and basketball game, every dance, every field trip, and every senior event, you all made so much fun. So from that little girl running off the bus so excited to share how her first day of kindergarten went, to that same girl walking through the high school halls for the last time, to now speaking at graduation, it's been a long ride. It can be easy to feel as though from the second we walk across this stage forward, we have to have it all figured out. After all, we are about to enter the real world. But the thing is, nobody sitting in this audience today has everything sorted out. We still have time to learn and make mistakes. We have time to figure out our strengths and how to use them. Hopefully, the past decade we have spent together in school has given us all the tools we need to start carving out a place for ourselves. One of the best pieces of advice I've received was to be careful not to look too far ahead into the future. Don't narrow your sight on the picture you have of your life 10 years from now so much that you miss out on all the opportunities that come your way. Always take chances and try new things, even if they seem a little risky. Because who knows? 
that different class in college or that risky new job might lead to amazing experiences and unforgettable memories. Finally, as we all enjoy the summer before the next chapter of our life begins, remember this, don't be afraid to fail. Make mistakes, but make sure you grow because of them. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and to embrace the uncomfortable. Live in the present as much as you can and make sure to appreciate all the little things that make life beautiful. Wherever you go and whatever you do, be sure to do it with grace, humility, and kindness. As the wise Mr. B once said, your mountain is waiting. Make sure you stop and enjoy the climb. Thank you.
I don't have drums and whatever those things are called. Uh, but hello and welcome to all of our graduates today. I would like to thank the members of the Board of Education for attending today's ceremony, as well as the members of our administration, Principal Paschke and Assistant Principal Lauer. I would also like to thank all the speakers today, and it's not in here, but I want to give a special thanks to the teachers. You guys have supported us for 12 years, and we wouldn't be here without you. I truly have a special place in my heart for all of you, and I want to come back and say hi in a couple of years. But most importantly, I really need to give a thank you to the parents attending today and all those who have supported these soon-to-be alumni. And finally, I need to give a thanks to my family. My mom, who has encouraged me to be me and been there for me through the ups and downs. My dad, for being the funniest person I know and always giving the best advice, even if I didn't want to hear it. And last but certainly least, my brother. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Or I could say my best friend. I can't wait to grow old together with you and the kittens and our tens of thousands of Legos. It truly is an honor to be addressing all of my classmates today and speaking for them as we have endured years of hardships, probably more than past graduating classes, yet we made it. I would also like to take this opportunity to remember a senior who should be walking the stage tonight and should be celebrating 12 years of education with her friends and family. Unfortunately, Lauren Arch tragically lost her life, and I feel it is appropriate that in recognition of the class of 2023 today, we have a moment to recognize her as well as her accomplishments. As the famous poem goes, you can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what she would want, smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. So could we please have a moment of silence to remember who and who we lost? Thank you so much. I feel that it is pretty well known among the class that I am very open about my love for Legos. I mean, I talked about it two seconds ago. Yes, I'm also known for my dashing charm, profound humor, and stunning looks, but those go without saying. Some may say Legos are for kids and that I should have dropped them years ago, but you could say the same for almost everything. And some Lego sets are 18 plus, so I have a couple more years with them. However, as I was putting this speech together, I feel that you can relate Legos to one's life, and each piece you add to your structure contributes to the building that is your future and your life. Right now, as we stand here after 17 or 18 years, we only have our base complete. We have enough knowledge and experience to help us in the near future, but we are nowhere near done. As we each individually spend our time in higher education, the military, trade school, or the workforce, we will add more and more pieces. These pieces will all be different shapes and sizes, different colors even. Some may be more important than others. In the speech, I will call those foundational pieces. If you remove them, the structure will falter. Some may be extra pieces. They could fall off and you really won't notice. I did want to spend a little more time talking about those foundational pieces though. These won't always be good. They may be a person who came into your life that you wish to erase, but you can't. It may be something you said or an action you did where you wish you could turn back the hands of time, but you can't. It may be a simple or disastrous mistake where you feel tempted to remove it from your structure, from your memory, from your life, but you can't because you take that piece out and everything will crumble. Everything you learn from mistakes and from people will be out the window. I remember sitting at class night watching the slideshow of teachers and their advice, and something Mr. Bittinger, the physics teacher, said stuck with me. Now, unfortunately, I never had him, but I can tell by how long his beard is that he is a very wise person, and they obviously agree as well. Um, it was something along the lines of, I'm a firm believer that everyone you meet in your life has a lesson to teach you and I couldn't agree more. Now, this lesson may be good or bad, but a lesson is a lesson. And let's be honest, a bad lesson is probably better than a good one in the long run because you can learn more from it. No matter what happens, you guys need to remember that everything does happen for a reason. In a year, five years, 10 years, or even 30 years from now, if you're feeling lost, down and out, and everything and everyone is against you, 
remember me up here talking about Legos at our graduation. Remember me saying that the universe will throw curveballs at you and that the structure you've been building for years may crumble. But some things are out of our control, so let it crumble. But then take those pieces that are sitting in a pile at your feet and start building again. If this ever happens, take this opportunity to rebuild it the way you want, to make it whatever final product you want to. Though some things in the universe we can't control, there are things we can. Something I have a belief in is the idea of karma, whether it be good or bad. Whatever we put out there, in action or words, it will come back. And these things could be with good intentions, and the universe will award us. Or if it was met with malice, it will punish us. And if it does punish us, it could cause this structure to teeter, a sign to not do that again, and that karma is real. It will make its way around, so take control of it. Taylor Swift once said, karma is a cat purring in my lap because it loves me. When our structures are about finished and our building's last pieces are placed, no one will be the same, and no one should look the same. As we move on out of high school, we will all have different experiences. We will all have different pieces that create our structures. So embrace those differences and be happy when you look at your neighbor and theirs is completely different. So as we walk the stage tonight and add a foundational piece to our building tonight, oh my God, it's not tonight, it's the afternoon. So as we walk the stage today and add a foundational piece to our building, we must not forget the lessons we have learned and the people we met, the experiences we've had and the friendships we made. Congratulations to the class of 2023. I am looking forward to seeing all the masterpieces we create and I truly wish you all great success. And I wanna leave you with one final quote, again from Taylor Swift. So make the friendship bracelets, take this moment and taste it. You have no reason to be afraid. You're on your own, kid. You always have been. Thank you. while you were gone The week after you left me I found a couple acres near Savannah Park I bought a house while you were gone A house with silver shutters and a driveway laid in marble and a thousands of rooms to fill and miles of space to I try to believe it It was better without you I was safer alone No, I'd give it all for you I'd give it all for you by my side once more I'd give it all for you I'd give it all the hold you I can to feel I'm completed now and then that all that I needed was you to find the fear and now you're here I took a trip while I was gone I cashed in all my savings and bought an Eldorado drove to Tennessee a trip while I was gone. I drove across the country and I stopped at lots of diners and stared at a million stars and thought I could touch the sky.
And I tried to believe it It was better without you I was finally free No, I give it all for you I give it all for you by my side once more Oh, I give it all for you I give it cause the mountains I climb get higher and higher I'm running from time and walking through fire And dreams just don't come true But now there's you God knows it's easy to hide Easy to hide from the things that you feel And harder to blindly trust what you don't understand God knows it's easy to run Easy to run from the people you love And harder to stand and fight for the things you believe Nothing about us was perfect or clear But when paradise calls me, I'd rather be here There's something between us that nobody else needs to see There were oceans to cross There were mountains to conquer And I stood on the shore And I stood on a cliff And the second before I jumped I knew where I needed to be I give it all for you, I give it all for you by my side once more. Oh, I give it all for you, I give it cause it's harder to touch the things that are dearer. I love you too much to trust something clearer. I know I fell too far. But some talented kids. I think they deserve another round of applause. <laughs> it's my honor to introduce our commencement speaker today, Janet Byrne Safir. Janet was born and raised in Fredonia, New York, and is a 1986 graduate of Fredonia High School. She graduated from the 3-2 engineering program with her Bachelor of Science degree in Physics from Fredonia State and a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering from the University of Buffalo in 1991. She went on to receive her MBA at Ryder University in New Jersey. Janet started the first five years of her career at Lockheed Martin Astrospace in New Jersey building commercial and government communication satellites. She has spent the last 27 years working at Moog, an aerospace and defense company headquartered in East Aurora, New York. She has progressed through multiple roles, managing major projects, negotiating, negotiating over a billion, dollar in con, billion dollars in contracts, and managing multiple business segments, including rocket engines. She is currently the vice president of the defense segment at Moog, where she manages over $3 million in revenue annually with approximately 1,000 employees. She is passionate about developing the next generation of industry leaders and providing a culture of inclusivity and diversity. Now, full disclosure, Janet and I have been friends since around eighth grade, and this has been a ruse, Janet. We haven't get to, got to spend much time together. There's no graduation going on here. Thank you. I'll pay you all for being here. Uh, no. uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to introduce my friend, Janet Byrne Safir. up there when I saw those instruments coming out because I could totally see Darren putting a trumpet in my hand and saying okay and the next performer or something <laughs> and I haven't touched a trumpet since I was in high school so uh, thank you uh, uh, 
Principal Kasky. So I, um, I haven't been on this uh, stage in uh, many, many years. As you can hear, I hear all those years and those add up pretty quickly. Um, if you can imagine what it was like for me to grow up, all you have to do is watch Stranger Things. That's about the age that uh, Darren and I met each other, uh, including us probably fighting during Dungeons and Dragons. So uh, that's, that's, that is pretty much him in a nutshell. If you want any more stories, come talk to me after the uh, graduation ceremony. <clears throat> so uh, these days, uh, as Darren said, uh, you know, I'm uh, in the defense industry. I'm usually presenting to generals and Fortune 500 executives, sometimes uh, saying why my hardware is late for delivery and some pretty hard conversations. But uh, now looking out on 120 some uh, college graduates, I, I'm feeling a little bit more intimidated than I think I have in front of the generals. So, um, so today we we grad, you know, we uh, gather here to celebrate a momentous. Uh, end of your journey and your high school careers. So now what? I was asked to share my thoughts and you know I thought to myself what would I tell my 18 year old self? And honestly the list is so big I couldn't get through it in this graduation ceremony. So I thought about something that has the power to shape your future. It's about finding your path. Let me restate that. It's about choosing your path. You have the power to shape your life one decision at a time. Your path is not about discovering a single road leading to a predetermined destination. It's about embracing the journey of self-discovery, exploring different avenues and having the courage to navigate the unknown. It's a process that requires patience and resilience and an unwavering belief in yourself. I've boiled it down to three things that have helped me have contribute to a successful and a balanced, happy life. One, surround yourself with good people. Two, don't let anybody say you can't. And three, know yourself and be open, open to new ideas. The first one, surround yourself with good people. Encircle yourself with people that support you, your friends, your family, your coworkers. Some of your friends will be forever friends, and you'll still go to New Year's Eve parties every year with them, though the parties get pretty subdued over the years. And some of your friends will fade away, and that's okay too. Choose the ones that lift you up. It's really that simple. Choose people who are reliable, and trustworthy. Actions speak much louder than words. Choose people who bring you joy and make you laugh every day. How will you know? You'll know. Trust your instincts, that pit in the middle of your stomach. It tells you what good feels like. Sometimes you don't get the choice. When you start off at work, you're often put into a team. And when I started developing teams, I thought to myself, I need people just like me. And what I really learned is the people that were the most unlikely, I learned the most from. They helped me pause and reflect. They helped me think in a different way. They helped me learn the most, what was most different about myself. In addition, I'm a true believer in the diversity of thought. The more I'm exposed to people from all walks of life, all around the world, I believe that more and more every year. As you set out into the world, it's important that you remember your past may intersect with others. Collaboration, empathy, and kindness are the compasses that will guide you towards meaningful connections in your life. Together, we have the power to create positive change in the world, to uplift those around us, and to leave a lasting impact on the world. It's important to find a mentor in life and in work. I found at different times in my life, I've needed help and guidance. That is not a sign of weakness. Ask for help along the way. Don't hesitate to reach out to someone who you respect and you connect with. It doesn't have to be a very formal relationship. Just enjoy it and be lifted up by those around you. Find someone who thinks about your interest and isn't just trying to get you to the next step in the next job. 
but what you really have passion around. So surround yourself with good people. Secondly, don't tell any, let anyone tell you you can't. So I had two high school teachers uh, influence my life in a significant way. The first was my freshman high school math teacher who told me I was exceptionally talented in math. He pushed me to do my best. He gave me goals. He told me I could get 100 on all of the math regents exams. I got two out of three, and I was pretty impressed. Do they have regents exams anymore? Okay, all right, they're still regents, sorry. Right. So um, he was a very positive influence. He believed in me, and I believed in myself. The, sec the second teacher was my high school physics teacher who told me on un no uncertain terms I would never be an engineer. Now, for the, for the record here, uh, I did talk a lot in his class, and anyone who knows me, I, that's probably not a surprise, but I believed in myself, and I believed it was the right path for me. So I went down that path, and oh, by the way, I did get my engineering degree and my physics degree. <clears throat> it turns out that engineering school was very hard, but I surrounded myself with good people that I could learn from and that I could also teach. Each of us had our areas of expertise. We helped each other through hard times. Remember rule number one, surround yourself with good people. <clears throat> I share these examples of how you can be influenced and how you can influence others. You are on both sides of the coin. When you hear negativity, it's how you react and how well you know yourself that will determine how you respond. I'll talk about that more in number three, know yourself. Right now, there are probably many people in your lives telling you what the best path for you is, maybe even having it all mapped out for the next five years or 10 years. The answer is, only you will know if you're on the right path for you as you travel along your journey. It's a lot to ask an 18-year-old to plan out the rest of your lives most of us, even a, a bit older than that, are still figuring it out. For some of you, the path might be a straight line, but most of you will curve around a bit, pivot, or take a fork in the road. Don't be afraid to take those alternate paths and to take risks. I learned the most from my failures, the jobs I didn't get, the people I didn't date, the failure projects at work. There's no time like the present to have so many options and different paths to achieve success. It doesn't have to be college. I think someone else mentioned one of the largest growing gaps in the, in the United States and what I see around the world in our business is skilled trade fields such as machinists, electricians, carpenters. I don't use the word skilled lightly as so many of the most effective people I have met along the way and over my years have not had formal degrees but had real life practical experience. One of the technicians in my first job told me I, I was unable to design my way out of a paper bag. <laughs> he, he was probably right at the time. It was my first job out of college. And uh, well, I took the opportunity to, to learn from him and have him be my mentor. And he taught me quite a bit. So finally, don't let anyone ever tell you it's too late. I've seen people take radical changes in their lives at all ages and all expertise levels. I've come across people who've gotten out of the military who had complete families start college and go on with their lives. I've seen people stop college, and I don't like the word dropout since it has such a negative connotation, but I've seen people leave college and then go on to do wonderful things. They pursued the trades, started up their own companies, and had artistic passions. I have so much respect for all of them, and none of their paths were a straight line. Start everything you do with the basics. No matter what your path, just show up every day and give it your best. You get to choose how you show up in life, and it will make a difference. And don't let anyone tell you you can't. This last one's hard. Know yourself and be open to new ideas and paths. Starting tomorrow, you will not be the same person you are today. Allow yourself to evolve and don't look back. Along the way, life gives you these little gifts that add on to create the new you. You might not seem like gifts at a time, but you learn from as much from the challenges, 
if not more, than you learn from your good events in your life. Take time in life to look at who you are and decide if that's who you want to be. Again, you get to choose. It's up to you. I love the passion and the openness I see from your generation. I believe you'd be the ones to truly change the thoughts on diversity and be open to taking different paths. You are way more self-aware and discuss your emotions and needs in a way I couldn't have imagined at the age of 18. I've had more insightful discussions with my 22 and my 24-year-olds than I have ever had with my, enti my parents my entire life. You are a unique generation, much more aware of your value and your worth in our society. Don't lose that. One time I had a family member <laughs> ask me why I was negotiating my next job and salary and why I wasn't just happy having, having a job. And I said, because I was worth it. And 27 years later, I'm working for the same company and running a $300 million defense business. For you women out there, I would love to say the field's filled with 50-50 opportunities, but I can't. I can say, however, it's getting better than it has and it continues in the right trajectory. I still find myself having to frequently prove my worth, but more and more companies are truly valuing diversity of thought and are working hard to make it an equal and better place for everyone, but it's still a journey in the workforce. So women, please support each other along the way because we still need it. So finally, always stay true to yourself in a world that often tries to dictate who we should be and what we should pursue, it's critical to listen to those whispers of our hearts. Trust your instincts, follow your passions, and let your authenticity shine through. Your unique path is waiting to be forged, and it's only staying true to yourself that you will discover the extraordinary possibilities that lie ahead. Some of us have made already found our callings, while some other of us are in the process of discovery, and that's okay. Each one of us has a unique timeline in life, and there's no rush to have it all figured out. What truly matters is that we embark on the journey of self-discovery with an open mind and a willingness to explore. Don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone and try new things and challenge yourself. Take risks because it is in those moments of uncertainty that we often find our greatest strengths and passions. So remember, don't just find your path, choose your path. Surround yourself with good people. Don't let anyone tell you you can't. Know yourself and be open to new ideas. Congratulations, graduates. May your past be filled with purpose, fulfillment, and a deep sense of joy. Thank you. Good afternoon. Before I begin, I would like to thank our principal, Mr. Paschke, our vice principal, Mr. Lauer, our school board of education, and of course, the class of 2023. I also would like to take this moment to thank some of the faculty who uh, really had a huge impact to me throughout my high school career. Mr. Newell, Ms. Lauder, Mr. Wendell, Mr. James Hobbs, and Mr. B, no matter what my uh, region's physics score was. So, uh, You've heard this many times, but it's in my speech, so I'm just gonna roll with it. Uh, many of us have been together since kindergarten. That's 13 years of us learning and growing together. Obviously, we've made, uh, or a lot of people have been added to our class, but it's crazy to see how far we've come to accomplish something like this. I remember walking in to school on the first day of freshman year thinking, oh God, what do I even do? We figured it out, even though I might have gotten lost at the beginning of this year. And then I also remember uh, walk, our whole class getting called into the uh, auditorium right before Thanksgiving break and seeing the orchestra all set up on stage. I was like, no way, we're getting a Thanksgiving Day concert. Spoiler alert, that's not what happened. Instead of getting a concert, we got yelled at for performing poorly academically and just straight up misbehaving. We probably deserved it back then, maybe even today sometimes, but I think, and I quote, we were told we were the worst class he's seen in 20 years. 
But this speech isn't, about, isn't about where we were back then. It's about how far we've come and how much we have more to grow. As you walk across the stage in a few short moments, I want you to look back really quick at everything you have done leading up to this moment. And, and then as soon as you get your diploma, I want you just to look forward. Look forward at your dreams and your goals and think to yourself, how are you gonna get there? I've always been optimistic and a big dreamer. My parents can back me up on that one. So when you get up here, I want you to do the same thing. As we close this chapter and begin a new one, I challenge you to stay determined. This next part of our lives is not gonna be easy, but I have no doubt that if you keep your eyes moving forward, every single one of you can accomplish something great in this world. I've thoroughly enjoyed all my time with you guys and cannot wait to see what you do. And with that, class prez out. At this time, it is my pleasure and privilege to begin awarding high school diplomas to the members of the class of 2023. Will the first row of candidates please rise? Ms. Davis and Mr. Romans, please introduce the candidates. Zane G. Allen. <laughs> Calder Thomas Anir. <laughs> Lauren Rebecca Arch. Lauren's diploma is being accepted on behalf of Lauren's family by her friend Olivia Wood. Amaria Ardillo. <laughs> Jetziel Lorenzo Baez. Morgan L. Bailey. Riley Catherine Beers. <laughs> Leah R. Bennett. <laughs> Emerson Louise Bramer. <laughs> Timothy Allen Brandon III. Joseph T. Brown. Matthew A. Brown. Shanti Devi Kalani. Matthew Perry Cash. Lauren Christine Siri. Tyler R. Christopher. Dominic Colazzo. Allie Nicole Cook. Ava Angela Nicole Cook. <laughs> Maxwell L. Carenti. <laughs> Nathaniel Dizon Kosako. <laughs> Jordan, 
James Patrick Cotter. Joshua James Cruz. Catherine Jane Shikansky. Andrew D. Hunt. Micah T. Davis. Ryan Matthew Davis. Sarah Renee Davis. Anthony Wilson Derby. Gabriella Snyder Domenico. Austin Raymond Duliba. Gianna Marie Farrow. Gianna's diploma will be presented by her mother, Director of Special Education, Kristen Farrow. Clayton Paul Frazier. Greta L. Frerichs. Ethan C. Fry. Cameron Gates. Mackenzie P. George. Grace Catherine Glavy. Annie Marion Gondek. Jessica D. Gonzalez Vargas. Carlos Gonzalez. <laughs> Molly G. Greeno. Gianna Francesca Leona Gullo. Gianna's diploma will be presented by her grandfather, former Board of Education President Joseph Gullo. Zachary T. Hall. Ronald Charles Harmon III. J. S. Hawk. Gabriel A. Helwig. Jackson P. Hickey. Lucas M. Hoffman. Haley A. Hood. Hannah Rose Horn. Ariana P. Huber. Marlo M. Hustis. Chase Mackenzie Ibach. McKenna Diane Incido.
Zachary M. Koski. Stephen N. Keefe. Ava Diana Carer. Nathan Lyle Knight. Kira Fate Coleman. Giacinti L. Lurito. Julia Lauren LeBaron. Jacob Eugene Lemke. Adam James Lesh. Adriana R. Lisa. Aiden Lachlan McGregor. Claire M. Marshall. Claire's diploma is being presented by her father and Board of Education member, Aaron Marshall. Gabriela Camille Matos Dominguez. Angelina Sophia May. Maria Nevea Madam. Asher B. McNatt. Ryan P. Mendez. Claire Ann O'Connell. Grayson D. Osborne Coy. Aiden Matthew Pakevich. Lucy Jean Previtt. Glacia L. Prill. Emma Rose Putney. Michael D. Riddle. Danielle Christine Rewalt. Abigail Marie Roth. Willa Marie Ruckman. Jesse James Sack. Matthew William John Schrantz. Samuel Elliot Schrantz. Ariana Francis Sharp. Deanna Lee Sharp. Morgan L. Sievert. <laughs> Jessica Marie Sinclair. <laughs> Cassie Lee Smazinski.
Melody F. Snyder Pratt. Justin Robert Stalter. Eva Jean Mahoney Storm. Jacob R. Sullivan. Salvatore M. Tabone. Tristan Anthony Tarbell. Dominic R. Tenemore. Josephine Audrey Tomaszewski. Jenna Michalina Truby. Kara Ann Vecchio. Gracie Jo Doviez. Alexander Raymond Weiss. Keegan David Whitfield. Ethan James Willebrandt. Zaya Alexandria Wojinski. Olivia Isabel Wood. Brandon M. Ronski. Jaden A. Yeriko. Please join me in congratulating the graduating class of 2023. Will the candidates please rise? The faculty and administration of the Fredonia Central School District have verified that you have successfully completed this prescribed course of high school study for the state of New York. Thereby, by the power vested in me by the state of New York and the Board of Education, wait for it. I hereby award you a high school diploma. You can cross your tassel from the right to left. <laughs> Congratulations. The, the graduates may now be seated. Hi. 
Members of the Board of Education, Superintendent Ziliox, Principal Paschke, Assistant Principal Lauer, parents, teachers, honored guests, and my fellow graduates. My name is Gianna Gullo, and I'm the 2023 Student Body President. I wanted this time to, use the share, to share a bit of advice. This lesson has been given many times and has guided me throughout my journey. It stems from the invaluable but simple advice from my Nana, a woman whose grace, compassion, and unwavering empathy has shaped me. Kindness, she often reminds me, is free. Always be kind. As long as we are genuine and kind, we can create authentic connections that are rooted in compassion. We believe that this lesson is so basic, everyone had learned it in kindergarten, right? However, I've also been a high schooler. I know that we tend to be self-focused. We tend, we often forget to just be kind. When we feel insecure, and when others have not been kind to us, those were in times when kindness is most important. Writing the speech has inspired me to look for some examples of kindness from my classmates in the months before graduation. A few people stood out. For the past four years, Stephen Keefe has smiled at me every time he passed me in the hallway and has asked me how I was doing. More importantly, he actually did want to know how I was doing. Willa Ruckman has stuck out playing the violin in orchestra just so we can still talk during the first period. Lucy Previtt and Leah Bennett helped me make an end of year present for Ms. Trary and it turned out beautifully. I don't know what I would have done without them. Maria made him ask me where, about where I was going to college in the lunchroom and Neil Kosico always gossiped with me during tennis season. Riley Beers answered every one of my statistic questions in Mr. Finchdor's class without complaint. And trust me, I had a lot of questions. Finally, Ava Carer has always made me feel included, important, and appreciated as a person. These small kindnesses that we do for each other usually go unnoticed. For me, these things often made my day. There were definitely more of you that I did not list, but I wanted to thank you. For those of you who have not noticed these things yet, take a look around you. Recall the times your classmates have acted with kindness and cherish the connections that have developed from those moments. So, class of 2023, I leave you with a challenge. Be the person that brings light to other people's day and appreciate the light that others bring to yours. Spread your kindness and be genuine because the lessons we learned in kindergarten are perhaps the most important lessons of all. Thank you and congratulations on this accomplishment.